Hello everyone, today let's solve distinct subsequences. Given two strings S and T, return the number of distinct subsequences of S which equals T. Let's recall what is a subsequence. That means it's a new string formed from the original string by deleting some of the characters without uh, disturbing the remaining characters' relative positions. So you should uh, distinguish what is a subsequence and uh, what is a substring. Substring, we have, uh, we have to make sure it is a consecutive from the original string. So let's see this example. This is the or uh sorry. We have to find how many subsequence of S equals to T. So we can see the many ways lie on this how to form this double B. We have triple B here. We can choose the first B, second the second B and the second B and the third B or the first B and the third B. So that's how the three ways comes from. So how to solve this problem? Let's see. We should match every character from the string T. But for the characters in string S, we do not need to include, include it. That is how the different ways came from or come from. We choose some characters from string S and we uh, don't choose uh, certain characters from string S. Let's see. Uh, let's imagine the sim simplest situation when the corresponding character in the string T and the corresponding character in the string S they are equal. So what is the total num uh, total ways to form it? That should be the total ways to form its. Uh, um, ex exclude that characters. What does that mean? Because, for example, it, if we want to form this R A B and this R A B B, we know this B they are equal. So that's simple. The ways to form, um, the way the subsequence in this substring to form this substring is just uh, the way to form. Uh, the R A and R A B. Why? Because they are equal, so they don't uh, um, reduce some ways. So at least uh, we know we should uh, uh, be the same ways to form the R A and R A B. So that's a very important thing. And uh, another situation is that if the current uh, character is not equal to this character, like this A and B, they don't equal. So how many ways? R A and I B A and B don't equal. So the ways to form um an R A in this I B is should be the ways to form R A from R A, which means we exclude that character because it doesn't make use. So we just need because anyhow we should form this T so we cannot uh, change anything for this character but uh, for this string but uh, for the S we can don't use that character so I think now you should understand what is the transition function we iterate every character in the T because we should to form this string and then we iterate characters in the string S which can have more character than the T. So that's the uh, index i and the index j. So if this T i equal to S j, then the total number will just uh, be uh, y v plus 1. Because you can imagine it uh, equal to the length. So the length should usually um larger than the index by 1. So it's the length. That means the length is i, the length is j. This means the length is i minus 1. This is j minus 1, right? You can think of that. So um, it should be, we, we let's see if it's equal, so we don't use it. This is one way to call it. The other way is that we don't use the current uh, character in the string s. So that's 
why we use j, but the i plus 1 cannot change because we should form that uh, string. What if they don't equal? We just uh, let it uh, equal to i plus 1 and j. That means we don't use the current uh, character in the string s. So that's the function. So what is the dpij mean exactly? Uh, mean exactly? Actually, that's it. You can see the i is the index for the t string. The j is the index for the s string. So that means the length of this i, the length of uh, actually i minus one, uh, j minus one. What is the ways to form this uh, substring to zero to i in the string t uh, by using the subsequence of the string in the s from zero to j. <laughs> so that's it. Just some index uh, on the two strings. So let's see the example to better understanding the transition function. So um, this is the string t. This is the string s. So this is the i, the index, the j, the index. So uh, for dynamic uh, programming problem, we um, other than this transition function, we also need the initialization. So what is the in initialization? That means if we just uh, uh, the length we for if the length of the string t equal to zero, then any length in the string of s should uh, match it, right? So that's why O one. We have one way to match a uh, empty string, so that's one comes from, and then this is i, the equal. So that should uh, from this function it should show equal to the anti-diagonal number plus its preceding number. So 1 plus 0 equal to 1. So that's 1, one way. The same thing, they are equal. So that's 1, 1 plus this 0 and b, 1 plus 0. And for this b, well, as we only need to match r, a, b, and now we have r, a, b, b. So we have two ways, right? It equals to this one plus this one. So the anti-diagonal that means we just need to match the R A B and the R A. So it's one way, right? And then R A B and R A B they also have one way. So in total we have two ways. So uh, the same thing for this. If we ending I, we have three ways because this is three ways and this is zero ways. So in total we have three ways. What if they don't equal? So for this example, this b and t, so we just need uh, to pass its preceding ways to here. So that's three. So we also have three ways to uh, match it. So do not uh, misuse the index here, because anyhow we should match the substring in the t string, not the s string. So if we don't use the current character, it's okay. We just uh, pass its preceding value. We keep the row unchanged, and we only change this column. Okay. So now let's convert it to code. We first need uh, the m, which equal to s dot length, and n equal to t dot length. Um, they have some. Quick check. If m equal to n, then we just need to check whether s equals to t. If it equals, we have one way. Otherwise, we have zero ways. And if m less than, because uh, ideally this m should be greater than n. But what if it's less than n? We have no way to form it. So we just return zero. Otherwise, we have the dp. The first uh, is a row. Row should be n plus 1, and the columns is m plus 1. For the in initialization, just uh, uh, iterate every column j less or equal, uh, equal than, uh, sorry, it will be m, j plus plus, 
and the DP zero J will equal to one way, right? And uh, next, we just iterate every uh, row and column. That will be row nine plus plus four int j equal to zero j less than n j plus plus. So we check whether s char at uh, j equal to t char at uh, i. If they equal, then that will be i plus one j plus one equal to d p i j plus we should uh, match this um, i so we just uh, need the preceding value if not the case we just uh, pass it i plus 1 j plus 1 that will be dp i plus 1 j okay so in the end, uh, just to return d p m as uh, that will be n and uh, m. Okay, so seems like that. Thank you for watching. See you next time.